Asian policymakers to ease further in 2013? Well, right now, most, most of the economies are actually more or less at full capacity. So if nothing bad happens, there's no reason to loosen further because they're very much on track. Of course, if there were to be a shock to the world economy, and we discuss in the report, we discuss a number of sources of possible shocks, uh, policymakers should react. We actually believe that uh, on the fiscal side, there is more potential for boosting growth than on the monetary side. So if there were to be a shock, a reaction from the fiscal authorities could probably boost growth more than the monetary side. China's economy seems to be take, uh, turning a corner over the last few months, and your latest report puts growth at 8.4% in 2013. Are you convinced that China can maintain its economic stability and prosperity at these rates? Well, um, China did slow down this year quite a bit, and especially the first two quarters. Overall this year they come out at 7.9%, the lowest growth rate since 1999. Um, but it largely in the second half, they've seen a recovery. In the third quarter, there was a 9.1% on, on an annual basis growth, and we see that continuing in the fourth quarter. That lifts up growth in next year as well, because the base was a bit lower than before. So you see a bit of a base effect. We expect China to be growing in the order of 8.4% next year, and then gradually going to its longer-term potential growth rate, which we see decline over the next uh, uh, over the next decades, if you want, from something like eight percent in 2014 down to all the way down to five percent by the end of the next decade. And China has also moved to relax capital controls uh, and further the country's long-term goals towards liberalizing its currency. How will this impact investment flows here in Asia? Well, that's really interesting, and it's, it's one of the big, uh, the, the big developments that I think will play out over the next 10 years. I don't think there will be a, a rapid full liberalization of the capital account, and the central bank governor has said as much uh, very, very recently. But this opening up of the capital account is interesting. Right now, China still focuses actually more on the inflows rather than on the outflows uh, of capital control. But at the same time, uh, China has a saving surplus. So in a way, right now, they export their saving surplus through building up international reserves. They're now liberalizing on the inflows, which means that they probably build up a bit more international reserves, because people do want to invest in China. But the outflow of capital from China is going to be important going forward in, in our view. And if you want, that's the internationalization of the RMB. So the, that much more credit from China can be expected that could actually uh, uh, finance lots of lots of needs in the region, especially in infrastructure, but also in manufacturing. So that's what I think is going to happen over the next five to ten years.